The Art of Public Speaking by Dale Carnegie and Joseph Berg Asenwein. Section 34. Appendix C. Suggestive Subjects for Speeches. Footnote. It must be remembered that the phrasing of the subject will not necessarily serve for the title. With occasional hints on treatment. 1. Movies and Morals. 2. The Truth About Lying. The essence of truth-telling and lying, lies that are not so considered, the subtleties of distinctions required, examples of implied and acted lies. 3. Benefits that follow disasters. Benefits that have arisen out of floods, fires, earthquakes, wars, etc. 4. Haste for leisure. How the speed mania is born of a vain desire to enjoy a leisure that never comes, or, on the contrary, how the seeming haste of the world has given men shorter hours of labour and more time for rest, study, and pleasure. 5. St. Paul's Message to New York Truths from the Epistles Pertinent to the Great Cities of Today 6. Education and Crime 7. Loss is the mother of gain. How many men have been content until, losing all, they exerted their best efforts to regain success and succeeded more largely than before? 8. Egoism versus egotism. 9. Blunders of young fogeyism. 10. The waste of middlemen in charity systems. The cost of collecting funds for, and administering help to, the needy. The weakness of organized philanthropy, as compared with the giving that gives itself. 11. The economy of organized charity. The other side of the picture. 12. Freedom of the press. The true forces that hurtfully control too many newspapers are not those of arbitrary governments, but the corrupting influences of moneyed and political interests, fear of the liquor power, and the desire to please sensation-loving readers. 13. Helen Keller, Optimist 14. Back to the Farm, a study of the reasons underlying the movement. 15. It was ever thus. It ridiculed the pessimist who is never surprised at seeing failure. 16. The vocational high score. Value of direct training compared with the policy of laying broader foundations for later building. How the two theories work out in practice. Each plan can be especially applied in cases that seem to need special treatment. 17. All kinds of turning done here. A humorous, yet serious, discussion of the flopping windmill character. 18. The Egoistic Altruist. Herbert Spencer's theory is discussed in The Data of Ethics. 19. How the city menaces the nation. Economic perils in massed population. Show also the other side. Signs of the problems being solved. 20. The robust note in modern poetry. A comparison of the work of Galsworthy, Macefield and Kipling with that of some earlier poets. 21. The ideals of socialism. 22. The future of the small city. How men are coming to see the economic advantages of smaller municipalities. 23. Censorship for the theatre. Its relation to morals and art, its difficulties and its benefits. 24. For such a time as this. Mordecai's expression and its application to opportunities in modern woman's life. 25. Is the press venal? 26. Safety first. 27. Means and Extremes 28. Rubicons and Pontoons How great men not only made momentous decisions, but created means to carry them out. A speech full of historical examples. 29. Economy a Revenue 
30. The patriotism of protest against popular idols. 31. Savonarola, the divine outcast. 32. The true politician. Revert to the original meaning of the word. Build the speech around one man as the chief example. 33. Colonels and shells. Leadership and cannon fodder. A protest against war in its effect on the common people. 34. Why is a militant? A dispassionate examination of the claims of the British militant suffragette. 35. Art and morals. The difference between the nude and the naked in art. 36. Can my country be wrong? False patriotism and true, with examples of popularly hated patriots. 37. Government by party. An analysis of our present political system and the movement toward reform. 38. The effects of fiction on history. 39. The effects of history on fiction. 40. The influence of war on literature. 41. Chinese Gordon, a eulogy. 42. Taxes and higher education. Should all men be compelled to contribute to the support of universities and professional schools? 43. Prize cattle versus prize babies. Is eugenics a science, and is it practicable? 44. Benevolent autocracy. Is a strongly paternal government better for the masses than a much larger freedom for the individual? 45. Second-hand opinions. The tendency to swallow reviews instead of forming one's own views. 46. Parentage or power? A study of which form of aristocracy must eventually prevail, that of blood or that of talent? 47. The blessing of discontent. Based on many examples of what has been accomplished by those who have not let well enough alone. 48. Corrupt and contented. A study of the relation of the apathetic voter to vicious government. 49. The Moloch of child labor. 50. Every man has a right to work. 51. Charity that fosters pauperism. 52. Not in our stars, but in ourselves. Destiny versus choice. 53. Environment versus heredity. 54. The bravery of doubt. Doubt, not mere unbelief. True grounds for doubt. What doubt has led to. Examples, the weakness of mere doubt. The attitude of the wholesome doubter versus that of the wholesale doubter. 55. The Spirit of Monticello. A message from the life of Thomas Jefferson. 56. Narrowness in Specialism. The dangers of specializing without first possessing broad knowledge. The eye too close to one subject. Balance is a vital prerequisite for specialization. 57. Responsibility of labor unions to the law. 58. The future of southern literature. What conditions in the history, temperament, and environment of our southern people indicate a bright literary future? 59. Woman, the hope of idealism in America. 60. The value of debating clubs. 61. An army of 30 millions in praise of the Sunday School. 62. The Baby. How the ever-new baby holds mankind in unselfish courses and saves us all from going lastingly wrong. 63. Lo, the poor capitalist, his trials and problems. 64. Honey and Sting, a lesson from the bee. 65. Ungrateful Republics. Examples from history. 66. Every man has his price. Horace Walpole's cynical remark is not true now, nor was it true even in his own corrupt era. Of what sort are the men who cannot be bought? 
examples. 67. The scholar in diplomacy, examples in American life. 68. Locks and keys. There is a key for every lock. No difficulty so great, no truth so obscure, no problem so involved, but that there is a key to fit the lock. The search for the right key, the struggle to adjust it, the vigilance to retain it, these are some of the problems of success. 69. Right makes might. 70. Rooming with a ghost. Influence of the woman graduate of fifty years before on the college girl who lives in the room once occupied by the distinguished old grad. 71. No fact is a single fact. The importance of weighing facts relatively. 72. Is classical education dead to rise no more? 73. Invective against Nietzsche's philosophy. 74. Why have we bosses? A fair-minded examination of the uses and abuses of the political leader. 75. A plea for settlement work. 76. Credulity versus faith. 77. What is humour? 78. Use and abuse of the cartoon. 79. The pulpit in politics. 80. Are colleges growing too large? 81. The doom of absolutism. 82. Shall woman help keep house for town, city, state, and nation? 83. The educational test for suffrage. 84. The property test for suffrage. 85. The menace of the plutocrat. 86. The cost of high living. 87. The cost of conveniences. 88. Waste in American life. 89. The effect of the photoplay on the legitimate theatre. 90. Room for the kicker. There are no numbers 91 to 99. 100. The need for trained diplomats. 101. The shadow of the Iron Chancellor. 102. The tyranny of the crowd. 103. Is our trial by jury satisfactory? 104. The high cost of securing justice. 105. The need for speedier court trials. 106. Triumphs of the American engineer. 107. Girthels and Gorgers. 108. Public education makes service to the public a duty. 109. Man owes his life to the common good. End of section 34.